This show is brought to you by listeners like you. Support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitters here. Talking Indie Wrestling. With Indie Wrestlers. What a novel concept. Uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, we have plenty of interviews over the last uh, two, three plus years, I think we've been doing this, and uh, going strong with 2017. So many people lined up in the can, coming out in the next few months. We, I think we, we're, we're good through like March, uh, if everything comes through with everything we got scheduled. Keep an eye on the Facebook page, Wrestling Mayhem Show. The live streams and events are popping up all the time to see uh, who we have coming up. You can join us live. Like, Tragar is a pretty uh, usual suspect in these uh, chat rooms or in the live streams. Thank you so much for that and you can see the interview before we officially release them and clean them up and do all that kind of fun stuff and take out whatever they said about that guy they really shouldn't have said that thing about you know uh so uh, and like i said please support the show over at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and if you have uh, any 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 thoughts on who we should have on the show we're getting a lot of suggestions and, and following through with a lot of that lately hence like so many that we have in the can right now uh you can hit up good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or two i'm sorry 412 206 WMS zero. Um, I always like when we have uh, uh, friends of the show that uh, we get to uh, uh, bring back on kind of a regular basis. And uh, I know we've been doing that with some of the rookies here over the last several years, our uh, Britt Bakers and Delata Dooms. And uh, we have somebody that's the opposite of those two individuals in particular uh, back with us. He is a recent Ring of Honor signee. He is Notorious Shane Taylor. I don't know. I'm not up on all your monikers these days. I heard a new one last night. Uh, There's a bunch, man. Uh, <laughs> it was a pretty boy killer or something like yeah, that? Yeah, man. Yeah. And I'll I'll explain that here in a second of why uh, the origin of that and why I chose to uh, kind of have that one. Uh, but it's definitely good to be back. And um, uh, yeah, man. The whole ring of honor thing it, it's it, it was a long time goal that now i'm kind of sitting here and you know uh recapping it in my head and i'm like wow <laughs> yeah it's amazing yeah. It, it was just uh i was just listening back to that last because i want to see what we what we chatted about and see where you were with mm-hmm. stuff i think you were just starting with future of honor at the time and you talked about going to texas mm-hmm. you know you kind of uh, uh laid waste to everybody here in pittsburgh and wanted to uh, uh, uh some new challenges and mm-hmm. of course that got you some opportunity with ring of honor like of Absolutely. course friend like you know ray row and everything Mm -hmm. like that doing amazing there Mm -hmm. as well um so so like so what's a year in ring of honor like (laughs) uh it is eye-opening uh it is humbling and uh but at the same time it's very very exciting uh to be able to uh see how things are done on a grander scale and you're sitting there with and, and and they use the tagline you know the best wrestling on the planet and it's not just it's not just a name like it really is when you look at the guys like top to bottom Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Jay Lethal, Jay Briscoe, Mark Briscoe, you know, up and down the line, some of if not the best professional wrestlers in the world, you know, to so to be with those guys on the road and to watch their matches, study them um and to see them day in and day out, uh you learn an incredible amount, you know, just sitting back in the sidelines. So to now be kind of uh right in the middle of everything is it's a great experience it's fun and they seem to be in uh sort of a uh you know it seemed like uh, you know ring of honor you know we've looked at them since they got bought by sinclair and kind mm-hmm. of seeing that grow and they're kind of working these different markets and showing up in more places mm-hmm. but even just like that experience like of the tv show seems to be growing absolutely. over the last year too absolutely uh they've they're in a bunch of new markets now uh and it, it's really great to see a company like that uh continue to grow and continue to give guys opportunities to do, you know, what we all want to do. And that's make this a living and make this career and take care of our families. And, um, they're able to do that, man. It's awesome to know what, you know, to, to see guys growing, to see the company growing and it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, so let's get into the names. (laughs) Oh yeah. I I need to know the background of this when I saw, when I heard that one last night. Let's see. Uh, Pretty Boy Killers. Uh, that is, uh, the, it wasn't it wasn't mine to start mm-hmm. with. Uh, a buddy of mine back in Cleveland, uh, his name is Trip Lee. He actually used it, uh, and once I heard it, I was like, "That's awesome." Uh, but then, like over time, especially in wrestling, of how 
things used to be and the stigma that a lot of people have about wrestling. Um, a lot of people get chances and a lot of people do things and get opportunities simply because of the way they look. We're, we're in a very cosmetic business. Um, but that doesn't always mean because you look a certain way that you have the talent to do what we do. Um, so to me, that was always a big thing. I've never identified with being a Hulk Hogan or an ultimate warrior. I, I was never a kid that was going to have an eight pack. I was never going to be a kid that looked good in baby oil or trunks like that. That, that it just wasn't me, you know, but seeing guys like Vader, guys like Stan Hansen, you know, guys like Misawa and like guys are just like, Hey, those are big guys. They're just big and strong. They're just beating people up like that. I can do that to me that, you know, your skill set and looking like you can fight is significantly better than just, um, having a six pack, you know? Uh, so when, uh, I started thinking about the name and I was talking to trip and I was just like, Hey man, do you mind if I use that? And he was like, go ahead. Hell yeah. You know? Um, so that's always been a thing for me. It's just like, it's, it's more of a, and, and, and it's a way of life about a lot of things too, you know, um, whether it be, you know, how you're dressing or anything else, like it's a very kind of uh DIY mindset. Like just because you look better than me doesn't mean you are better than me. Um, so I took, I very much took that to heart and it's something that, you know, drives me in the gym. It drives me, you know, in my performances, it drives me in everyday life just to, uh, to be like, okay, yeah, I'm the guy that is going to show you that just because that guy looks good in trunks and baby and baby oil, that he's not half the performer that I am. And I'm going to prove that not only to him, but to management, but to the fans, but to everybody, they're going to understand, you know, exactly who I am. Let's talk about a little bit of the, the, the style and where you're at with things. Cause mm -hmm. one thing that, that, that struck me last night, you know, listen to Joe Nebraska on commentary. He's, he's a, he's keeping, he, he kind of gave me a pre-interview by listening to him on commentary mm -hmm. while you're wrestling. Uh, but, <laughs> nice. Joe's but, good. Uh, Joe's yeah. Good. Oh, he's awesome. He knows everything. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you talk about, you, you cut a bit of weight and mm -hmm. you're definitely more mobile in there. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to do the, uh, the moonsaults and stuff like Keith Lee? Are you getting, taking some tips from him? <laughs> uh, I, I take a lot of tips from, from Keith. Moonsaults wouldn't be one of them. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like I said, uh, a lot of my a lot of my goals are just to be able to uh, have weapons and have an arsenal that, you know, have a collective group of moves that I can just pick from when I want to uh, and to have the ability to do that and be more mobile. Uh, uh, they just help with they, they help with that to be more agile. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, cutting the weight helps. I plan on probably cutting probably another another fifty pounds or so, um, and just really kind of bringing together a lot of new techniques and a lot of new things. Um, but yeah, as far as the moon salt and stuff go, that's 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 all Keith. I'm gonna let him keep doing that wherever he does it, you know. And uh, I hope I hope it wins him a lot of matches and you know you does go. some great things for him. But uh, I'm gonna stick more to just punching people in the face because that's what I do best. There you go. There you go. Uh, just an idol. Is uh, calling you out in chat room, by the way. Man, uh, he says, "Don't let <laughs> he says, don't let, let Shane lie to you. He does wear the baby oil." Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Stop it. Stop it. So there you go. We have we have a few people in there. <laughs> right uh, here. Yeah. So Face. thank you everybody for joining us here on the live stream here on this early early Sunday yes. morning as of this recording. Um, like I say, we, we we mentioned I think briefly you returned um, last night. Uh, at uh, IWC's Reloaded 3.0, yeah. um, you know, between that and we talked to, at length last time you were on about your experience with RWA and mm -hmm. that, and kind of growing up uh, in the area before heading out to Texas. Um, what was it like to uh, get in there uh, in front of the more or less hometownish crowd? I know you're from Cleveland originally, oh, but, yeah. but still, like a lot of stuff happened for you here. here in Ab Pittsburgh absolutely. Uh, my home promotion was basically IWC when I started. You know, so. Uh, and back then, you know, and you look at the guys that have, you know, been a product of IWC, whether it's, you know, um, with, you know, DJZ, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of like their old, their old names and trying to think of what they are now. So I'm like, uh, I know he's, like, he's, he's always <laughs> Shima to me, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, he's Shima, but DJZ and Gory and Facade and, you know, and Gargano was here for a while, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, 
course, Sterling and his brother, Sam Elias, now doing great things in Mexico. And uh, just all the guys that came from there. Um, what is what is Shulo's name down in NXT uh, now? Drifter, uh, Elias Samson. Elias Samson. I was like, is it, I'm like, I was getting him confused with Samuel Elias. I'm like, it's, I know it's something I like that. I do the same thing. Yeah. Every time. Uh, like, every time I look at a tweet of Samuel. No, 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 no. It's, it's the other one. It's the other one. Yeah. Yeah, Elias Samson. Like, I was his last match before he went down there, you know? So, like, to see all those guys doing great things is, is, is really cool. And for me, um, after being away for three years, it was it, it was a very surreal moment to be back in that ring in front of those fans and uh, really took me back. And I was like, it, it feels really good to be home. Mm-hmm. And you took on, um, thankfully, you didn't get the T-Rex. <laughs> I mean, that would have been an easy night. You yeah, know? I know, right? I, know, right? I, I got you, my cash and left. But you did take on a, another dinosaur of sword in, uh, in Wardlow, who's been uh, mm. uh, tearing through there over the last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and you know, coming up, like, I always see wasn't the one, like, typically where I saw, like, the big guys clash. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really interesting to see, like, that on this level with, oh, with you guys last night. And, and a brutal match. It was tremendous. Oh, oh, thank you, man. And actually, again, catching a little bit of this here. Oh, I'm sorry, my audio's on. Uh, but catching that a little bit last night, you guys getting out oh, yeah. uh, close and personal with the crowd. If you guys are on video here, oh yeah. Uh, so some some good stuff. <laughs> it's what I do, man. I I, I like to fight. <laughs> some people like to talk. I like to throw hands, man. There you uh, go. And yeah, the shout out to my buddy Daryl Big Herc Allen for taking this video because I, I know that was him, and uh, it's been blowing up like. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man. Uh, especially because I think it was like Wardlow's uncle and his mom that were like in the corner there, <laughs> so uh, they were kind of talking trash at intermission, and I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna beat your boy up, and I'm gonna do it in front of you just so you know who you're dealing with. Uh, I, so. I, I heard about that. So, so the chops are like, hold on, let me let me let me pull over here. <laughs> like, so is that them right there in the corner? Yeah, kind that's of? them right there. Because I heard that the, right, right to the our, left of him. Our, our, our guys, Bobby and Riz, were back at the DVD table behind this. Mm-hmm. I don't think, yeah, you can see the mouse on there. Um, and and said that after you did that, like she just got right up. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. I uh. You don't mess with Mama Wardlow. Hey. I, <laughs> if, if if you're willing to talk trash, you got to be willing to you know see what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember I was at Wildcat Sports. I just had a match with a guy, Edwin Stone, down there, and his mom was in in the crowd. I know I punched him in the face and like blew her a kiss. Just to be like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and of course, there's pictures of the aftermath on Wardlow's chest. Oh yeah, going on too. Oh yeah. So um, so that's yeah. that's that's one of those to pass along to the wrestling isn't real people out there on the internet. Actually, at like um, because it's like a 50 second clip at like second 27 or 28, you can hear some guy next to Herc going, "Yeah, that that's not fake." Like. <laughs> He's like, not one bit. And I was like, yeah, that's right. That's there you right. go. I pride myself on that. There you go. Um, I say he's a pretty, uh, Warlow's pretty impressive guy. What was it like to work mm-hmm. with a guy like that? He's very talented. You know, he looks great. Um, that was a swanton. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And I'm glad I moved out of the way. Because uh, I saw what it did to the T-Rex. And I was like, no. Nah. Uh, I think it blew out a seam on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, the, he was a little thinner after that. but uh, <laughs> That's a weight loss plan right there. Right there. <laughs> 10 second abs by Warlow, you know, just get hit with a swanton. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's very, very quick, very strong, uh, very agile, you know, um, good looking guy. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, and maybe it's just me, but I feel like I had him if it wasn't for Labar getting in the way and, you know, running his mouth. But, uh, that's on me. I got to keep my eye on the ball the next time. And if there's a rematch, then I'm walking out with that IWC world championship. What would be left of the T Rex if you had your hands on that thing? Oh, uh, there, they, he, he would go back to being extinct. Man, like, I, I love how it's just like he just keeps turning him. That's <laughs> it's great. It's like, like tetherball. This, this, this might be the rest of the shows I was watching this right. Oh, that's like, fine. It's, that's it's fine. for you on audio. I'm sorry, uh, but it's Wardlow <laughs> um, punching the T Rex in the face, and he just kind of does a spin in the ring. Uh, so that. <laughs> Pro wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, and still not the weirdest thing that's probably happened in pro wrestling. So, not even close. Um, that, yeah, uh, Bobby F. J. Town, who was there in in uh, attendance last night, helped us out with the uh, DVDs for Help Out Indie Wrestling at US. Uh, he says, "Who's been your favorite person to work with in the ring in your career so far?" Oh wow, that those are always tough questions because there's different answers for different things. Um, 
I'm going to give you two. Uh, obviously, the first one would be Ray Rowe. Um, I'm a guy that uh, I get motivated by physicality. Like, I, I like fighting. I like getting hit. Um, it, it's sadistic, I know, but that that gets me motivated to go out there um, and put my body on the line even more. Uh, so Ray is one of the strongest and most physical guys in wrestling. I don't care what company you're talking about. Like, um, he is, you can ask anyone, and, and he's the guy. Um, so being in there with Ray and fighting him is always one of my favorite things to do, as much as it hurts then and, and the next few days after. Um, that's always one of my favorites. And being in the ring with Jay Briscoe, because he is uh, one of the most intense guys in wrestling. And for someone who prides himself on being intense to have it matched and exceeded and kind of play that one upsmanship game in that moment. Uh, he's another guy that brings out the best in everybody that he wrestles. Uh, so those are the two that I, that I personally like the most. Awesome. Um, uh, Justin in there is asking, uh, like how, how does you know, it's good. We kind of have every question, right. I think a little bit, but he's like, how's the family responding to you in your life, life on the road, traveling a lot, especially with that scheduled ring of honor, you mm -hmm. get a lot of different places and, mm -hmm. and farther places. Uh, my, my family has been great. My girlfriend, Abby is, she's awesome. Um, and my daughter, Abby, um, I get to spend pretty much all week with them, you know, and then I'll leave, you know, whether it be on a Thursday or a Friday and head out. Um, but they, they handle it great. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's always been important to me. Um, when I was even starting and dreaming about doing this as a career, um, uh, to not become one of the horror stories that I heard. You know, where your kid, where their kids grow, grow up and end up hating them because they got to see daddy on TV or mommy on TV, but they were never home, you know, and um, and I, I never wanted to have that story. I always wanted I, I wanted to find a way to do both, a way to balance it um, and not, you know, miss birthdays and miss, you know, plays and miss, you know, all the things that come with watching your kids grow up. Uh, and being able to make a living with, with Ring of Honor and travel and do all that has provided me with that. You know, I, I get to be on the road less than, you know, somewhere else, you know, instead of 300 something days a year, it's, you know, 200, you know, 200 days a year or what have you. And uh, I, I get to be at, at home more. You know, I, I get to see my daughter grow up. I get to see, I'll get to see my future kids grow up. Um, so for me to be able to, make a living doing what I love doing and provide for my family and make sure they're okay and be comfortable was, has always been my biggest goals. It was never to be super famous. I don't care if I walk down the street and one out of a hundred people knows who I am. Don't care. My, my bills are paid. I'm good. You know? And I know some people are out there like, well, if you're not in it to be this, then get out of it. I, I, I don't care. Like, <laughs> uh, I grew up in East Cleveland, on the east side of Cleveland, Ohio. I grew up, you know, blue collar as they come, um, or, or even less than that, you know. And uh, I, I, I don't need the fame. I just need to be able to, to provide for my family doing what I love doing and be the best at what I do in my frame, you know, of, of what I want my goals to be. Um, so that is that is why I love being in Ring of Honor. That's why I love... Um, being able to do what I do uh, in a company that's that respected and has that notoriety. Because uh, then you can actually prove, hey, I am the best at what I do in the world. No one can take that from me. And I get to do it my way. That's awesome. And, 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 so, many, and so many opportunities there with the travel and everything mm -hmm. with their relationships with so many other companies. Absolutely. That really lends to, because I, I was really struck by um, uh, probably last month sometime, the the Kevin Kelly was on I think the Taz show I caught mm -hmm. him on a live stream one one day, and they they, they talked about kind of um, the spot Ring of Honor was in and how their contracted guys have that kind of freedom and mm -hmm. a place and an opportunity without going to you know the other other three lettered uh, uh, places, mm -hmm. um, and and that really seems to connect a lot with like what he was talking there from the other side of things. That's really oh, cool to see. absolutely, you know, um, people, you know. They people love Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. They love working there, you know. Uh, and it's one of I've told everyone this: like that locker room 
is one of the most genuine places to work because people genuinely want you to be successful. Uh, it, it is very much a team mindset um, and the team comes first, you know, uh, and for guys to be able to make the kind of money that they make there and get those opportunities to be able to say, hey, I want to stay in Ring of Honor. To me, that is phenomenal. Like not to, you know, have a play on words, but um, that's great, you know, and I, I've told people i've made it known that i'm not looking to use our way to the platform elsewhere i want to be a ring of honor guy i want to be like the briscoes or you know people like that to put the mantle of the company on my back and say hey i'm gonna take this as far as i possibly can Mm -hmm. and that'll be my legacy that's what i'm measured by my success here um you have the opportunities like you mentioned you know they have their dealings with new japan their partnership with 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 them and cmll now um so there's plenty of chances to get work and make money outside of roh but to be there um i personally feel like that is that's my platform and that's that's where i want to grow that's where i want to establish myself and um kind of let the world know who i am here you go um geez uh what 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 so kind of throw back i don't want to do mm-hmm. all the same questions because we've obviously done it a year ago <laughs> but uh uh what are you watching these days other than ring of honor or anybody in particular in ring mm-hmm. of honor anybody on the indies anything else going on that's like uh either that's inspiring you or getting your attention uh i i try to watch a little bit of everything man uh i, I mainly watch roh because that's my com- that's my competition i always study tape uh i was taught by my dad along time ago to know your enemy you know so uh i i always study i always you know check up check that out uh but you know i i have a lot of friends that are doing a lot of a lot of great things across the country so i'll always look into the things that they're that they're up to um i know there's a great company down in austin texas in austin texas can't talk today uh, Wrestle Circus, uh, they're doing great things. You're getting a lot of attention there. these days. A lot those, of attention. We've been looking at those cards, and they're they, they're insane. Everybody, everybody, insane. Mm-hmm. How are they doing this? <laughs> I don't know how they're doing it, but I'm glad they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, competition is always good, mm-hmm. regardless of what society tells you. Uh, competition always brings out the the best in people, uh, and the cream rises to the top, and they seem to be on one hell of a roll. I know the last time me and Keith were there, we beat up Dalton Castle's boys. Uh, sorry, I'm not sorry. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's looking like maybe it'll be PBK against uh, KES or maybe even uh, Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, or maybe even all three. I mean... Girls of Destiny, I, 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 they have some potty mouths uh, from what oh, I saw. Oh, my Kingdom. gosh. Carino oh. lost it on oh, that show. My. It was amazing. I, I was watching that live, and I'm at the gym, and I had to stop what I was doing because I couldn't catch my breath because I was laughing so hard. And listening to Carino laugh and absolutely lose it on commentary was the best thing I've ever heard. And, you know... <laughs> And God bless Kevin Kelly too, trying to hold it together because like he's like, well, the kids are up on the East Coast, <laughs> like like I was just like, wow, what are they doing, you know? Uh, but I mean, hey, there's 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 different rules, yeah, at, you know. Yeah. It's that but that was hilarious. They're though. not naughty words there, I guess, right? <laughs> I guess you can say whatever you want, you know what I mean? That's great. Um, and we'll do a twist on an old uh, question that we do here. So um, what is the best and worst thing about working past year in Ring of Honor? The best and worst thing? Oh, wow. Um, the best thing is the competition, uh, being able to uh, test yourself all the time against the best, uh, the best wrestlers in the world. Uh, that's something that I personally like. I strive to be better every day. Um, in some aspect of my life, whether it's my body, whether it's learning something, whether it's, you know, being a better father, better boyfriend, whatever I can do to improve myself at some point today than I was yesterday is always my goal. Um, so being in there with them and testing yourself every, every night, um, that to me is one of the best things. And I guess one of the worst things is, 
I don't know. Just uh, I mean, there's not there's nothing really bad about it. Like I mean, yeah, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's not the troubles of the Indies. Yeah, you're like in I, Ring I of mean, Honor, yeah, right? I'm like I'm making I'm making great money. Uh, I'm not, you know, I I I don't dislike going to work. Like I, I like going to work. You know, uh, I, I like hitting people in the face and getting hit, and that's what I get paid to do now. So I mean, there's there's nothing really bad about it. You know, uh, if people want to complain about the travel, I mean, that's that's part of why are you in this business exactly like like that's like you i i, I and i'm gonna go on like a, a, a small rant here but i hate when people like get into a profession and then complain about what it is like you signed up for this mm-hmm. like i hate like movie stars that are like i don't want to be in the line like yes you do that's why you became a movie star like you can't section yourself off in a box of what you want to do and what you don't like you have to take all of the good with all of the bad like and, and wrestling is no different. You can't ask or want to be a wrestler and then get mad because fans want to talk to you at, at the airport. Like, you can't you can't do that. Like, you just have to, like, that is part of what you do. Like, and if you're in a hurry, guys, hey, I'm in a hurry. Let's walk and talk to my gate. Like, we're going this way. Like, I'm not going to sit. Like, I'll sign stuff on the way, but we have to go. You know what I mean? People will understand that instead of, like, just blowing them off or going, oh, well. He's a jerk. Like, yeah, we're we're all busy. We all have lives. I get it, but you know, and I, I know there was a recent thing like with Orton. He's getting he's getting in some trouble for that too. But, um, and while they don't own you, you know what I mean? Like, you still represent uh, exactly. I mean, yeah, but you're, I mean, you're, like, you're a face representing the company, so you you, you, you see yourself, that. right? Yeah. But like a lot of people, and and like, um, and my girlfriend reminded me of this too because I'll, I'll get a lot of messages. Of people like you inspired me to do this and this this and I'm like whoa like I've never been that guy to like to to take that kind of adulation I'm like ah it makes me uncomfortable mm-hmm. you know but she's like babe you know you see yourself one way they see you completely different so you have to understand how they're looking at you you're not just a normal person to them you know and a lot of people don't get that like you're not just another guy to them to them you're special so they're gonna want they're gonna want to talk to you they're gonna want to be around you they're gonna want to see what you have to say you know like that that's just a part of doing it now and granted there are there are times and places where things are unnecessary i get that but it's just a part of life man like mm-hmm. that's part of what we do there was a good conversation with that with uh, uh sammy recently on Cole Cabana's podcast mm-hmm. about how he, you know, he did chew, right? Yeah. And then talked about like, like some some kid came up to him and says, "I do chew because you do chew," and yeah. that was just like hit him like so hard, and that's one yeah. of the reasons he quit. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like, yeah, like even like you're like, hey, I'm an indie wrestler, or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm not that thing, but it's like, man, even if you're just a guy that does the one town in that in you know in that area, mm-hmm. some little kid is like, mm-hmm. you're Hulk Hogan, right? Mm-hmm. So and, and and I think that that's a really good thing to remember. I, I, absolutely, and uh, it's. You are, you have such an impact on so many people, regardless of if you know it or not. Uh, so I try to set, you know, the best example that I can while being a violent individual uh, <laughs> uh, to, to kind of understand that and appreciate that in the things that I do in, in the things that, that I say, whether it's social media, whether, whether it's whatever, you know, to kind of always understand that there are always people watching. You know, whether it be kids, whether it be other adults, there are always people that are taking their cues from you or waiting for you to slip. Like, you know, like either way, it's always important. Either, to either way, you're under a microscope. Either way. Yeah. Either way. Absolutely. Um, well, I'll ask comment here. Comment here probably before we head out here. Uh, Dean out there. Dean Dolan? Dean, ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I got What's up, brother? Probably something you do. Yeah. Because I used to love hearing Shane is so stiff and I would just shake my head and said, don't be a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> This is a grown man sport, man. This is this is physical. You know, a lot of people uh, look down on re- on wrestling because they're like, oh, well, it's not the NFL or it's not, you know, the NBA or what have you, or it's not MMA. And I'm like, well, get in the ring with me and we'll see how you feel in 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, this is physical. This is what we do. This is a grown man, grown woman sport. Uh, physicality comes with the job. This is, it is what it is. 
being called out by Justin Idol again. The traveling easy is easy for Shane. Uh, he's a notorious sleeper. Uh, get out of it. First, you know five, what? Five minutes into the trip and Shane's passed out. <laughs> first off, no. First off, I, I catch a bad rap with that because Ray Rowe, uh, when we were riding up and down the roads together, is sneaky as hell because I used to work nights. And so I wouldn't I, I wouldn't go to bed till 4 or 5 a.m. And when you have to jump in a car at 9, I'm usually sleeping anyway. So I'm I'm in my regular routine. Mm-hmm. But now it's funny for him to be like, oh, there he is sleeping again. I'd be sleeping anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, but then it goes on Facebook and everybody's like, oh, yeah, he's done it again. You know, and then, but Ray will sleep too, but he sleeps at night. You can't get a good picture of him at night. And he, he plans it out because he's, he's a jerk like that. But like, um, but I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it, people say that, but I've been in road trips for 15 hours plus completely awake, you know, gassed up on monsters and coffee, but I'm awake, you know, and they're having a lot of fun with us in the chat. Right? Of course they are. Of course they are. You're all haters. You're yeah, all haters. Chris LaRusso gives you a shout out. One of the best, best in the business. He says. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Congratulations to Chris too. I, I want to say, I think he made the top prospect tournament or maybe, I, I don't know if that's supposed to be out yet. I don't know. Oh, or we might have to edit that. We might have to edit that. Uh, uh, but uh, but. I, this out. I don't know. Uh, but anyways. Um, Maybe by the time it comes out, then it, it'll be fine. Like, sure. Like, we're <laughs> live now. So, uh, no, uh, nobody's watching. Uh, if not, uh, just, just cut it out. It just never happened. All right. So with that, Shane Taylor, check him out. Uh, Twitter, Shane216Taylor. At Shane216Taylor. Instagram as well. Also, uh, pro wrestling tees.com slash Shane Taylor, uh, bottom line merch.com slash Shane Taylor. Get your shirts, uh, get, get, get your merch, get your merchandise, hit me up on social media. Uh, and if you guys see me at a show, come say what's up. There you go. There you go. And, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Everybody in the chat room, which we are now going to have private until this releases on Thursday. <laughs> so you're the lucky few. Uh, so <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. You got uh, check the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show to see when um, these come up. These uh, these live interviews pop up on the Facebook Live. And they release, of course, every Thursday. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. And, of course, check out the main show live every Tuesday at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. As of this release, we should have uh, Dangerous Dan Hooven, who, uh, the photographer who has Hooven. had his first match this past weekend, thanks to the reset button at the Hooven International Brown. Wrestling Cartel. Can't wait for hooven ground so i'm sure that was a great time and you should check that out and uh all the action live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com thank you so much to our guest shane taylor thank you guys for having and me good luck with ring of honor and uh check him out and until next time support shane taylor support ring of honor support indie wrestling this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.